Jesus mighty name we prayed in Jesus mighty name we prayed tell somebody beside you it is my month of laughter tell the person confidently it is my month of laughter now ask the person what about you then what is your response it is my month of laughter I really want to appreciate my pastor for this opportunity to stand before this exalted altar to speak the word of the Lord. Uh, it's a big honor. I thank him, though he's not here, but he's listening to us, watching us. I really want to say thank you to my pastor and my pastor missus. Uh, may the good God bless them wherever they are in Jesus' name. Amen. The oil of God upon his life and that of his wife will never run dry in the name of Jesus Christ. I also want to appreciate my leaders in the house. They have been wonderful and I really want to say Dr. Austin, Dr. Shola, thank you sir for drawing me all the time. May the good God bless you. Briefly, our topic for the month is laughter. And our text is taken from the book of Genesis chapter 21, verse 6. Genesis 21, verse 6 it says, And Sarah said, God had made me to laugh, so that all that hears, all that knows, all that sees, all those who are around me will laugh with me. I pray for somebody in the house this morning that God will make everybody around you to laugh with you in the name of Jesus. Amen. It's as if you don't know the meaning of that prayer. I say God will make everybody around you to laugh with you in the name of Jesus. Amen. In my own little way of definition of laughter, Laughter is the satisfactory expression of happiness that you show at every time. It's a satisfactory expression of happiness that someone shows at every moment. It's also the natural expression of good news. What did I say? natural expression of good news. Good news is coming your way. Yeah. I say good news is coming your way. Yeah. I say good news is coming your way. Yeah. Put your hand on your chest and say good news is coming on my way. Yeah. Quickly, because I have limited time, what are the steps we must take for us to enjoy laughter and sorrow will be turned into laughter, into joy. Quickly, I want to mention four steps that a, a child of God must maintain that you must do and you must retain for you to continue in laughter. Number one, you must meet and have an encounter with the owner of joy. Amen? Amen? You must have an encounter with the owner of joy. The one who gives joy and added no sorrow. The God who can bring out nothing, something out of nothing. The same God who can make you to turn around within a, within a month, within a week, within a day, and everything around you will turn for good. And people will begin to ask you, how did you do it? Then you just smile and tell them, it is God. You must have an encounter with the one who can give joy and give it in abundance. James chapter 1 verse 17. James 1 verse 17. It says, that is our God who can give every good and perfect gift. God is a God who can give good and perfect gift. 
Gift that has no sorrow. Gift that has no pain. Gift that will come and every other people around you will ask you, how did it happen? And you will tell them, I don't know. I love a song. It says, I am serving the God of miracle. I know. Yes, I know. I am serving the God of miracle. I know. Yes, I know. What about you? I am serving. Sing, let me hear you. Oh, yes, I know. Yes, I know. Number two things is that you must constantly abide in his tabernacle. You can't be far away from me and expect, you to, uh, and expect me to do some things for you. We can't be far from our maker, from our God, and expect him to do everything for us. If you have a son, the son is not doing your will, you're not doing what you want it will be difficult for you to love that child the way you will love the one that obeys and does your will. So we must abide in his tabernacle. John chapter 15 verse 5. I am the vine and ye are the branches. He that abideth in me and I in him, same person shall bring forth fruits. For without me, you can do nothing. Without God, we cannot achieve anything. If you read verse 6 and verse 7, it's still talking about abiding in Christ. Number three things we must do is that we must, one's life must be devoid of what can terminate or disrupt the connection between you and God. Bible says, shall we be in sin and ask for grace to abound? No. So it is a must for you to maintain that relationship with your maker. Last thing is that you must be steadfast in him. Continue. Don't relent. Keep going. Tell somebody beside you, keep going. Keep Tell the person, keep going. Let's quickly look at one or two people who had reasons to laugh in the Bible. One or two people. Let us consider some personalities that laughed and, and said, yes, it is God. Uh, a man named Job who devil attempted to disturb or distract or affect had cause to laugh at the end. A woman also named Hannah who married and lived in the husband's house and has gone through several pain. Several times probably the, the child of the second wife he, he wants water. He said, please come and get me water. The, the, the second wife will say, ah, he, she is sick, he can't go, please, 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 please. Do you know how, bit, how painful it will be? In those days, they, you, you say, okay, please, can you go and fetch water for me, or can you go and do it? Ah, the man, no, 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 no. My child cannot go out at night. Oh. It's a source of sorrow. But one way or the other, she went on to the Lord, and in second, first Samuel chapter two, verse one. First Samuel chapter two, verse one. And Hannah prayed and said, My heart rejoiced in the Lord. My mouth is enlarged over my enemy because I rejoice in the salvation. I pray for somebody in the house this morning. That the Lord will enlarge your mouth, yes. give you good testimonies, and those who are around will look at you and congratulate you. Yes. Hannah 
has been living in shame, pain, and agony, sorrow. How will I be married? And God said, nobody shall be barren. You will never be barren. I can hear your amen. amen. It is not only physical barren that people, that you see and see somebody is barren. Somebody could be barren financially. The person could be barren maritally. But whichever one, we don't want to have anyone around us. I am praying this morning that in any way, in any form, you will never be barren. Amen. The Lord God that you serve will put a song in your mouth. Amen. And I said, my heart rejoiced in the Lord. My horn is exalted. My mouth is enlarged over my enemy. This morning, God will enlarge you. Amen. Also, let's look at the man at the pool of Bethsaida. This man was born. Do you know, sir, that this particular man, we have brother, we have sister, we have uncles and aunties. There will be at times they want to go for function occasion. He will be willing, he will wish to go. He would have loved to go. But who will carry him? Bible says they, they, he was waiting for somebody to carry him and just throw him into the water. But who will carry him to that function and sit down with him and say carry him back? Bible recorded that he was there at the pool of Bethsaida for 38 good years. Let's just assume it's just one year. Don't say 38, now let's say one year. Do you know within that year, man, rain will fall and sun will come down. That sun will beat him, that rain will beat him. It is, and he will be looking at some of his younger brothers, sisters, elders, uncles, and aunties moving and walking up and down. There would have even been at times where he was living his own low, low life that somebody would be coming. Maybe they are rushing. They want to rush into the water and they will mistakenly mash him. Everything that is standing or being a source of sorrow to you as God leave it. Today, God will turn them into joy in the name of Jesus. The centurion servant also and the widow of nine. The only child that woman had was lost. It became a sorrow. But all of a sudden Jesus Christ was passing by and turned the situation around for good. God will turn your situation around for good. Amen. I say God will turn your situation around for good. Amen. Now, when God turns situation around for good, when God decides to clothe you with joy and laughter. What are the things? Quickly, what are the things that we follow? Number one, when God turns sorrow into laughter, what are the things that we follow? Number one, there will be a new identity. <laughs> Amen? There will be what? A new identity. A new you is imagined in the name of Jesus Christ. For example, somebody who's been married for one or two years or let's say six months, family members, people around will be, when we, you know. But when you conceived and God gives you a son or God gives you a twin, those who used to call you sister or brother, they don't begin to name you daddy or uh, how do they, what's the name of our son now? They begin to mention your, 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 the name of your, your son or your, or your daughter. Number one, your identity will change. Number two, your name, you will have a new name. Amen. I say you will have a new name. Amen. You will have a new name. Amen. You will have a new name. Act of Apostles chapter 3 verse 10. The man was once lame. And each time they want to describe him, they will say, that lame man. That lame man. 
But the moment God turned the situation around, that man began to jump. He's no longer a lame man. His name has changed. His status has changed. Tell the person beside you, the Lord will change your status. First Samuel chapter twenty first Samuel chapter twenty six and twenty seven. Hannah that was used to call barren now become the mother of Samuel. Number three things that will happen is that your joy, our joy will overflow and there will be celebration. That man could not hide his celebration when he got healed. You can hide celebration. People will come from every angle to come and celebrate with you. Can I hear your amen? amen. Number four. Haters will become silent forever. Those who doesn't like you, when they see a new thing, they are silent. What they have been using to shame you, to say, uh, uh, it will now become a source of joy and laughter to you and they will be silent forever. Amen. Psalm 126. Then our mouth filled with laughter and our tongue with singing. Then said they among the hidden, the Lord had done great things. Do you believe God can do a great thing for you? Yes. Do you believe something great is coming your way? Yes. That as from today your name will turn to laughter. Yes. Rise upon your feet. Rise upon your feet. Because your name is now brother laughter. Sister laughter. That situation that is causing sorrow is gone. Do you believe? Do you believe? Come and close your eyes and begin to appreciate your God. The one who can turn situation around for good. Appreciate him because he's turning your situation around for good. He's changing your destiny into a, a destiny that is enviable. That people will see and begin to say, how did they do it? Just open your mouth and thank him. Thank you, Holy Spirit.